who wants a hometown hero vigilante type of video today? Yeah, me too. What's up, you guys? Welcome to today's video. As you can tell, we're going to be talking about a Batman-like character who was actually chasing in my hometown, I think he's moved on to another town. I'm going to check here in a second, but I've been meaning to film this video for quite some time. So if you are new here, hi, my name is Jess. I'm a person in long-term recovery who has been to prison with some crazy people. If you want to follow me on any other platform, TikTok, it might get banned, but whatever we're trying. <laughs> Instagram, Patreon, that's $2. It's only ever going to be $2. All of that is linked down below, as well as my vlog channel, where you can find me on Roku, my Spotify, my Facebook, all the things. It's in the, it's in the thing. Without further ado, let's kick this thing off. First and foremost, I would like to take this opportunity to apologize to absolutely fucking nobody. Nobody. I know the person that we're going to be talking about today. I've known him my entire life. When he sees this video, he's going to be pissed. I have mutual friends that are going to see this and maybe be mad. I don't know. Suck it. Don't care. Be mad all you want. But Sean is a predator and he uses his mental health and even his sexuality to prey on young boys. And that is what today's video is. So let me introduce you first to the man behind the vigilante style of To Catch a Predator. So this man's name is Cameron Decker. He is the one that goes into, you know, these towns and he basically sets up child predators. And that is exactly what we see here. And this really pisses people off. People get mad, people run. And he does this live on Facebook, by the way, and I will link it down below. So I've watched quite a few of these. The last one that I caught, he like had caught this predator. I'll, and I'll link it down below. He caught this predator and he went to go confront him. And the guy was armed and Cameron had to, you know, call the cops, which he does always, and tell them like, hey, I got your guy. I did your work for you. Here he is running into a pizza store and that was kind of it's not funny but it was kind of funny in that one because like this lady's like I got to go and she runs out the pizza place girl same I'd be like I'm the f out of here but this was June 5th of last year is where he catches Sean and the the way that he does this is he has a decoy who is an adult get on things like grinder tinder whatever these sites are I think he was using grinder for Sean's case and he pretends to be an underage boy and he's him and his friend that does this they say that they're underage boys they make that very well known the picture of the decoy is obviously a young looking boy sean talks to this person a bunch of times let's just watch it hold on hello hey sean can you hear me yeah. hey listen um i ha i need to talk this to is my hometown i know I cringe over to the police the person you were talking to today? Um, okay, so, so just listen real quick, all right? You were chatting with uh, with Jay, and you know, I just came in, in uh, to contact with some messages between you and him. Um, I wanna have a conversation with you about these. I think it's in your best interest. I don't wanna embarrass you at your house or anything like that. Um, but if you're willing to have a conversation, I don't have to turn this over to the police. Like all the messages, and I'm pretty sure Sydney. I'll get the way. What's happening? I'm sorry. You were. You... I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm not even at home. No, I, I, I know. I just um, drove by there. But so listen, I mean, you just gave the decoy the address or whatever. Um, I, I want to talk to you about the communications. Like, is there like a safe place that you and I could both meet out in public? I'm not. I don't want anything from you. I don't want to, you know, hurt you or anything, or I'm not asking for anything. I just want to talk about them rather than, you know, because if I turn it into the police, then they have to investigate it. And right, right, right. I understand. So I just tried going there to like, I, I didn't realize that the guy downstairs was your cousin or whatever, but he was very uh, upset with me. So he he's pretending to be Sean's friend and... It sucks. You know, it, it really sucks because, like I said, I've known Sean my entire life. Um, you know, he knows my whole family. He's going to be very mad when he sees this video. And, and Sean does have mental health issues. He's had addiction issues. 
um, all of that stuff. And I can be sympathetic to a point, but at the end of the day, he is still trying to get an underage boy to go to an address that he has set up here to have a date or to meet him for something. Now, Sean is older than me. I'm 34. Sean is like almost 40. Ew, I don't know when we got so old. Um, he's 38, 39. I mean, he's, he's older than me. I know that for sure. I want to say Sean's between 37 and 40. I'm not exactly sure his age, but this is creepy and surreal to see not only this happened in my hometown, but also somebody that I've known my entire life. Um, I was talking to a family member about this just maybe six months ago and her immediate instinct was to defend Sean. And I said, listen, I know that you, you think that, you know, Sean, like we, we all think that we know somebody right but we don't know what they do behind closed doors and she's like I just he wouldn't do that you know he was totally set up this is entrapment entrapment's not a real thing you know she really was trying to do all these mental gymnastics to protect predatory behavior which I don't blame her for at all you know who you are I love you it was just you know her heart and her mind could not comprehend that somebody that she knows and loves and trusts would do that. And I think that that is an important component to what we're talking about here is that a lot of times we don't mean to victim blame. We don't mean to say like, what were they doing on Grindr? What was a minor doing on Grindr? We don't mean to to protect predators. But I think when it comes to someone that we know and love, we just can't comprehend it. We can't conceive that they would do this. But this is a predator that's predatory behavior. And we have to recognize that while also setting our own feelings aside. And I think that is why so many predators get away with it for so long because we think, no, they couldn't. Or we think because we would never, how could they? They would never. You know, a lot of the time when we don't move that way, when we don't do that, we can't even see malice. We can't even see predatory behavior going on because we're looking at this person with rose co- rose covered glasses. Also, New York is not a two-party consent state. That's why this is admissible in court. He's also doing it on a live stream on Facebook just to cover that. Um, I'm not sure if that was a strategy, but it's a very good strategy because if he was just recording a phone call, the defense might, you know, say that that's not admissible in court, although the text messages absolutely would be admissible. They could fight back when it comes to like eavesdropping laws. Even though New York is not a two-party consent state, I could see that being a defense. So it's very smart that Cameron is doing this live on Facebook because now it's posted to social media. Now it's public knowledge as well. So it's just, it's very smart. It's very clever here. Oh, that's why Jared from Subway got away with shit for so long. There was a lady that knew what he was doing and he, like she was recording phone calls with Jared and the the feds couldn't use it because of eavesdropping laws. That's so random. Like all this random crap lives in my head rent free, but yeah crazy okay back to this trying to bring it to his attention everyone's everyone's cousin there and uh anyways i just i don't want any confrontation with anyone i just the point of the matter is the communications which i you are aware of and i'm aware of because i have them um yeah i mean like if we could just talk about it for like you know 20 30 minutes or whatever yeah no problem you can go um and i would prefer you to not involve your family that lives downstairs from you because they seem to be pretty confrontational which will leave me no choice but to call the police right um i'm heading home right now because i got um my two, uh, i got two chairs on the back of my truck okay um that i have to take up the stairs so i mean uh, is this the number i can get reach you at so i can call you and tell you where to meet me yeah, um, I think that you're, uh... I know that, I know him too. The ponytail, uh, that's downstairs. That's my uncle. Okay, yeah, he was very aggressive to me, saying, like, you know, that we entrapped, but I mean, like, obviously, you know, we didn't, like, reach out to you or anything like that. And in fact, it's been, like, what, two weeks since initially the, you know, yeah, yeah, conversations yeah. began? Um, yeah. so, you know, he, he was just being, I'm glad I went there when I did, because he would have just ended up being pretty confrontational. But, uh, His uncle is very confrontational. Okay, well, I mean, like, you gave an address, and technically, you know, the decoy tried walking over there because, you know, thought it was, like, in 30 minutes or whatever, and there was some phone. It- I am going to fast forward to when Sean is on the screen. He comes and meets them with the hope that he won't be arrested for this. 
No, I meant like I'm recording this in case your uncle shows up, so I... You, um, well, you never know with these people. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, like... Oh, sorry. Yeah, so I mean, like, uh, we can go closer to my car if you want, just so it doesn't look like, I don't know, sketch or whatever. But again, um, yeah, so the phone call was recorded. We record all the calls here because yeah, New York's one party consent. Um, but you do remember that you, like, talked on the phone with them, too. I don't remember. It was, like, 20 minutes long. Um, it was, it was the first night that you guys talked, like, two weeks ago. Yeah, I have short memory. No worries. I don't remember. No, I, I mean, I'm shaking. Or... No, I understand. Um, but I mean, like, you do understand the severity of... Yes, I do. Like, what was said and stuff like that. I mean, like, granted, here's the thing, like... There was two separate occasions that you told them where you live. The first time was back on May 19th, which was a couple weeks ago, roughly, give or take. Um, then there ended up not being a meetup that yeah, night. because that's when I turned in profile. Well, okay, so I will tell you this. You messaged him. He, he pretty much, you know, went to bed or whatever, but you did message him a couple times after you were supposed to meet up asking him where he was, that you're free now, you can come over. Um, those messages weren't even responded to until the next day. No, that, no I'm, that's fine. I'm just telling you what was said in the messages. Um, but here's, like, the issue with, with that, whether, you know, whatever you're planning to do or not doing, when you give somebody an address and, you know, you make plans or whatever – especially if it's a kid, you know, what if the kid were to actually show up, you know, like, uh, like, for example, instead of me showing up there when I did to your uncle being there, like, what if it was really a 15 year old that showed up there? I, uh, he wouldn't be, he wouldn't be, I'd send him out. I tell him to go home. Well, no, I'm saying like, uh, like even if you weren't home or whatever, like in your uncle, instead of your uncle meeting me, it's a 15 year old. Like what if your uncle had the same reaction to me as he did, or, like, you know, what your uncle said to me and threw me off of this property, basically. Um, what if he did that to a 15-year-old showing up there to meet you? Like, then, I don't know. I mean, like, it, that would scare the 15-year-old, right? <clears throat> you know? Um, which is why I asked you to come here to talk, because it's like, the, the plan was you were going to go pick up two chairs, and you already provided your address for him to come. But I wasn't going to meet up with him. I was going to hang. I was hanging out. No, with no, my no, buddy. no, 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 no. You weren't going to go meet up with him, but you provide an address for him to come meet up with you. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, if it was a, a kid showing up there, the kid would have just came up there because he already had your address. And I wouldn't have been home. Okay, but then your your uncle was there, and based on that's where he lives. <laughs> no, no, I understand. But based off of his reaction, that's what the kid would have encountered. Um. So, yeah, I mean, like, it's just a dangerous situation all in all. And the easiest way to even avoid all of this is when somebody tells you that they're underage or, you know, 15, that you just block them, you, you know. And then, like you said, you reported them on Grindr, right? Um, part of me, like, you know, I don't know if I believe that or not just because the conversations I kept, continued. I kept talking. You kept talking. So, I'm... I'm thinking, like, maybe you did report him, but it was more for, like, you didn't want to get in trouble than... Because... All right, so... I did it because he was underage. And I, I've done it because I uh, was talking to somebody who was underage, and I did the same thing to him, too. There, yeah, because yeah, I was going to ask you about that. You mentioned to him um, it was either in the recorded phone call or in one of the messages I'll have to go back and look, but you mentioned that there was somebody else that was underage, so you never ended up meeting that person? No, or? I turned him in. Oh, okay. Like, I did you... To Grindr. To Grindr. Okay, so he was also on Grindr. Yeah. Well, I can tell you that... That wasn't me or anyone affiliated with me, so that very well could have been a real kid. And I don't think there's anybody else in this area doing... You know, we, we don't just patrol on that app. We patrol every single app. Right. Um... But, you know, I can tell you, like, I've never talked to you other than this one it account. Makes me sick to my stomach. Like, sick to my stomach. Like, it, I'm, not, I, I'm not a baby raper or a, a child not, molester. Or yeah, I'm not insinuating that at all. Like that. 
No, and that's the thing. I want you to understand, like, I'm not standing here right now accusing you of being a child predator or anything. I'm simply just asking you about these conversations that, you know, took place between you and Jay, where there was some things talked about Jay losing his virginity. Um, you mentioned that you liked the bottom and that Jay would top or whatever. Jay asked you if you had condoms. You said no. Then Jay said, well, are you clean? If we don't use condoms, he said, yes, like there was never anything in there about potentially of you saying, hey, we shouldn't be talking about this or I'm not interested in this or, or whatever that the case may be. I go with a lot of people on Grindr because I don't read up with them. Gotcha. So it's just more like all for talk or yeah. is you sending the address to them then just kind of like even though you're not intending on them to showing up there or... Uh, meeting up more so just for like your own sexual pleasure like knowing that you gave them the address for stimulation is that pretty much why okay. do you also understand though like when you give an address to someone that can't consent you know it's 15 or whatever that they're probably not going to make the best decisions but they're still probably going to show up when i make it i make the best decision i'm not i no no i i get you're saying that but what i'm saying is like for example you have so once you provide an address to somebody, right? You don't have any control if they show up there or not. Right, right. Especially since he told you he's only seven hundred feet away. That's a pretty quick. I mean, it only took you about what five minutes to walk here, give or take, um, from where I was sitting when you were communicating, which is where he lived. Um, it's a shorter walk from there to your place. Once you said Liberty Street, I knew something was wrong. Something okay. So let me ask you this. So a couple of weeks have gone by, um, like at least two weeks. Yeah, I, that's what I was just going to say. You did reach out back to him. Um, I got a message from him saying, hey. And I said, hi, what's up? Yeah, so he messaged you the first, hey, what's up, uh, what, five or six days ago, right? Because, you know. Technically, he was out of town for that week or whatever. Uh, I think he told you that his phone was broken, that he got a new phone. But there was a couple of occasions. Uh, so Friday at, you know, 1047. Okay, so I don't know what happened here, but for the next three to four minutes, my microphone decided to just not work. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to read Sean's charges that he had in 2017 as well as the case that he caught here and i just want to note if i didn't say it earlier that sean knew how old this decoy was he knew very well that this decoy was 15 years old and he continued to talk to him this way and continued to get him or to try to get him to go to his apartment that is what makes him a predator is after you find out that this person is 15 and you continue to talk to him at all that is a problem Okay, let's start with the 2023 case, which is the case that we are showing right here. Two men are accused in separate Delaware County court cases of attempting to entice children into sex. These are the two people that Cameron caught. According to a media release from the office acting district attorney, Sean Smith, Sean M. Steele, which is now Sean Carinelli, or however you say that, I don't know. I don't talk to this dude. 41 of Sydney and Paul Thayer, 48 of Cooperstown, faced felony charges. So this boy was 15 years old. Sean was 41 years old. Thank God it was a decoy and no one got hurt. Oh my God. Steele appeared in court on June 13th to answer to two charges contained in an indictment handed down by the grand jury. The first count alleges Steele attempted to endanger the welfare of a child. The second accuses him of first degree attempted distribution of indecent material to a minor, which means he'd sent images back and forth. Then there was another case in 2017 where he was also caught up in an indictment that was sale of cocaine. So he was selling drugs, selling coke in Sydney. And he also had an indictment in 2017. To the best of my knowledge, Sean has never served prison time. I think he gets probation every time. Do with that information what you will. But I wanted to make it perfectly clear that he um, he is a predator. He knew he was 15 and he continued talking to him anyway. When he was arrested for this case, he was sent to jail on $7,500 cash bail and eventually ended up pleading guilty to one count. It was a reduced charge of um, trying to distribute images to minors. If you were on an app like that, the second somebody tells you that they are underage, stop talking to them. Oh my God, you freaking weirdos. 
you know, and, and people like Sean, predators like Sean will make every excuse in the book as to why that was okay. Oh, I reported the profile. You gave an address. You continue to talk to them after that and you give an address because you want them to meet you. You were not innocent in that. That is your predator. You're a fucking predator. The hard thing for me is I know he's going to call my mom. <laughs> Like, stop it. Like, that's how small my hometown is. He's going to be mad. His friends are going to be mad that I am making this video. They're going to report this video. They're going to do all of that just to try to cover up predatory behavior because they're friends with Sean. So before you get mad at me for talking about a predator, a now convicted predator, ask yourself why it enrages you so badly. Why do you want to protect a predator so badly? That's a you problem. Cameron, I think you're doing great work. And if you ever want to come on the channel, I would love to have you on. But I'm going to end today's video here. As always, I love you guys. Stay safe. Stay in recovery, whatever that looks like to you. Stop protecting predators. And I'll see you all in my next one.